Journey, joining us now, that is Ethan, attorney Liz Hudak from Berkman and Hudak in Carmel, New York. Hey, Liz. Hey, good morning, guys. How's hey, everyone hey, doing? Counselor, Thank you for getting uh, uh, back in touch with me right away. I appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. So yesterday I'm reading this article, a local article, about uh, this Aaron Meager, the CEO, executive director of the Greater Mayapac slash Carmel Chamber of Commerce and a trustee on the Brewster Village Board, how she was arrested Tuesday afternoon, charged with fourth degree uh, grand larceny. The allegations, basically, I'm just going to paraphrase here, say that she was spending money that didn't belong to her on uh, personal items and then creating invoices to uh, show that she wasn't doing this. Is, mm. it, is, is that, uh, did I sum that up correctly? Oh, yeah, that, that's accurate with, with uh, just one correction, one which she probably would like is, even though her name sound, uh, is, looks like it's meager, um, it's uh, pronounced Mar. Ah, okay, okay. So, so um, but, but probably, you know, at this point, um, the pronunciation of meager might be more pleasant to her, <laughs> although, as we all know, everyone is innocent in our system until proven guilty. Correct, correct. Now, my... Um, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, that being said, the charges of grand larceny in the fourth degree are, are, are pretty serious. That, that brings me to my next question. I, I wrote about this yesterday, and the, the blog will appear on i95rock.com. I don't see it now, but it should be there soon and my major question was she she was arrested and then she got a a, a ticket to, for an appearance in court for a later date now i i wrote in my blog uh let me tell you what right now <laughs> if i was arrested for fourth degree grand larceny i'd be sitting in a jail cell why is she not in jail right now awaiting a court date well, well i think that probably the investigators which were the um it's the putnam county sheriff's department together with the putnam county district attorney's office they probably uncovered uh, a certain amount, let's say, at this point in time, although they can increase the charge, uh, that is not as much as would require them to have her incarcerated or at least set out on bail. But who makes uh, that? that who... That's my impression. That's my thought, because appearance tickets are obviously something which are, she didn't go into court and she wasn't, uh, you know, it's $5,000 bail. So my thinking also is that probably they don't believe that she's a flight risk. I, you know, I, I, she's probably been in this area long enough that they don't think that she's going to skip town, and certainly the amount that she allegedly took wasn't of that sum that would make them any more nervous. Who makes that determination, the DA? I, I believe it was the, um, the sheriff's department uh -huh. that probably recommended it and the district attorney's office that recommended it. So, but at this point, that doesn't preclude the fact that they could amend it at a later date. Again, we're talking to Liz Hudak. How much, how much money are we talking Attorney Liz Hudak. Pardon me? How much money are we talking about here? Well, that's the thing. They really haven't said anything about the amount of money. But larceny, what, the grand larceny, is basically any monies over $1,000. But in this case, the, the interesting aspect of it is just taking that debit card creates the over $1,000. That's why it's a grand larceny, but it's the least degree that you can be accused of as a grand larceny. It's just basically taking the card and depriving somebody else of an interest in their goods. All right, let me which, back... according to the report from where, what I read, included um, uh, uh, Kate Spade Hanber bags, Ivanka Trump shoes, and Stitch Fix Personal Styling Services, which I found pretty intriguing enough to look it up. <laughs> because I had never heard of that. Yeah, yeah I had yeah. never heard of it either. What is it? Uh, well, Stitch Fix is a personal style service yeah. for uh, men and women on the go. So uh, apparently, uh, it's, they, they hand select clothing and accessories for you. Now, that's oh. something I never heard of. And ah. So <laughs> apparently, uh, uh, Ms. Marr was on the go. And unfortunately, now she might be going in a different direction. Yeah, I want to. I want to back up a second. Can we? Yeah, I'll tell we, you. we all blew right past this. Okay, rewind. Can we all agree that I'd be in jail right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just want to make that clear. Oh, sure. Uh, no question. I, I think. I think under your circumstances and and potentially, you know, with you know, potentially your past. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to agree. <laughs> Certainly. I love I, the I, brutal honesty. I. I. I no. yeah, it's one of those things where I don't want to fool any of your you know listeners out there. <laughs> yeah. No, of course. We're, we're, all, yeah. we're all kidding about this. Right, right. Not now, really, but okay. Now, this, this lady, that I've, lo I've, I've looked into her, and uh, she was a rising star in local politics. Oh, most definitely. Oh, most definitely. She was, uh, 
she was someone who, who I believe, uh, you know, at this point, and I'm not saying once again that she'll be found guilty of the charges, but, you know, should she be found guilty of the charges? And more likely than not, in cases like this, people plead to some kind of a disposition, um, which includes, oh, by the way, uh, full restitution for whatever it is that you took. Uh, but at this point, uh, yeah, if, if indeed she was found guilty of the charge or any other lesser charges, it probably will put a, a damper on any, uh, any offices that she might seek because of fiduciary responsibilities. This, these are like fiduciary. You, you're veerly you're violating a fiduciary responsibility to your and then, you know, constituents, if you're a public official, like that, uh, the treasurer in Mayapak who was, uh, uh, has now pled guilty. Yeah, I want to get to that. Michael Klein, uh, what is going on? What, I mean, it's just, uh, it's obvious cor- there's a corruption issue, or seems to be in Mayapak are the citizens there. I know you're, you're tied into the local community big time in, in Mayapak, Carmel, Brewster. Uh, people got to be fed up with the, with the corruption. Oh, it, it really, yeah, the interesting part of it is it, when you look at it in the big picture, it's, it's only a couple of people, but in a small community, or I should say the community that, that we live in here, it, it's, it's a big thing because you have the Michael Klein who takes uh, uh, $5.7 million <laughs> over the course of 13 years, and, and how he does it was stunning because, in effect, what he did was he wrote out checks he wrote out checks to other vendors, but deposited them in two business accounts that he owned the businesses. So, but over 13 years, which also obviously means somebody didn't check the books. So that, is, that, is that like technically a Ponzi scheme because he was moving the money around? Or how would you categorize that? Oh, no, it's just sheer embezzlement. It's just embezzlement, straight just up embezzlement. Just embezzlement. He took the money. But what was really stunning, of course, to the Mayapak community is things like... Um, you know, they thought everything was, was going quite well, and here comes the big firehouse, and oh, my God. And, and at the end of the day, you know, their funds were being used to, uh, well, buy a yacht for Mr. Klein <laughs> and, uh, and to uh, furnish him uh, quite a luxurious lifestyle, of which now part of his sentence will be restitution of the $5.7 million. God knows how you're going to do that. Yeah. If you're in jail and he can be incarcerated, for a maximum period of approximately 38 years wow. in a federal jail. To make clear, we're talking about two separate cases. This guy, Michael Klein, that uh, Liz was just talking about, has pled guilty. Uh, and uh, this Aaron Marr has uh, been arrested and is alleged to have embezzled money uh, from the Chamber of Commerce in Mayapak and Carmel. Correct or incorrect? Correct. Okay. And, and, and it's, a, it's obviously in... Ms. Mars case, it's a, it's a much, you know, it appears to be a much less amount. And, and also, uh, if, uh, once again, if convicted or if she pleads guilty to the charges, involves uh, uh, goods like, uh, like Ivanka shoes, which, uh, you know, since she's an up-and-coming rising <laughs> you star. Gotta, you got to have the Ivankas if you're a rising well, star in the Republican she's on, Party. She's on the go, too. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she's on the go, and now she's on the go with the Inv- Ivanka shoes. But, um, but, yeah, um, much different, but not in a way because it's just taking monies away from, you know, people. Chamber of Commerce has over 300 members. Obviously, the Mayapak, which covers the town of Carmel and Putnam. Uh, it's, it's, it's very uh, discouraging to the, local, uh, to the local people who live in these communities. But certainly, uh, it's out there. I, you know, it's been splashed all over towns, and it's something where hopefully uh, – People who are in these kinds of positions will not continue to abrogate their fiduciary responsibilities not to uh, take money. Fiduciary, fiduciary, left and right. Let me ask you a question, Liz. <laughs> a personal, you, uh, as a person who gives legal advice for a living, Liz Hudak joining us, by the way, uh, have you been getting advice to separate yourself from the Ethan Alou show? <laughs> Uh, now, I'm going to have to take the fifth on that. Yeah, okay. Uh, you know, my Fifth Amendment privilege not to, uh, <clears throat> um, you know, incriminate myself. Right, so, sure. Uh, I mean, that's, that's you know, it's certainly. <laughs> now, actually, I've enjoyed these, uh, these uh, interludes with you guys. Well, I hope as this case and some of the other ones we've been following locally, and, of course, the Bill Cosby thing, which we're going to get to when that 
uh, starts firing up again, you'll continue to work with us. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. We love you, Liz. Thank you so much. Love you guys, too. Thanks, Take care. Bye-bye. 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 Attorney Liz Hudak from Berkman. Well, Hudak in Carmel, New York. attorney, Elizabeth Hudak. Now, let's do a little communication here, a yeah. little behind-the-scenes communication. Okay. We ran so late, started so late, right. we got to get into the news. And the I just don't know what to do right now. Well, that's you what know we, what? We're that's gonna, what we should do. We're going to check in with Bove right now. All right. Nick Bovey.